Pressing your own flowers and leaves is a great affordable option for our nature inspired crafts. I'm gonna take you all around my yard and we're gonna gather some leaves and flowers together. I'll do my best to have the names for you. If I can't remember, I'll just mention this particular one here. I honestly cannot remember what it is. It's a different name, but it's got beautiful, delicate leaves and beautiful flowers. I have this fern. It actually popped up all on its own and it always grows these beautiful fronds. They're great for drying. I also have this shrub here. I think this is called Bridal Veil Spirea. I'm not 100%, but let me know down below if you know. This here is called Pearly Everlasting. You can press it, but you could also hang it upside down and allow it to dry as well. My cat always likes to join me when I'm outside. He loves it when his humans are outside and collecting some different things in the garden. I have this beautiful lavender and it is in full bloom now. So I am going to pick some of this. Of course, I'm sure a lot of you already know this dries really well and it presses really well too. patch of some little violets that always self-seed themselves so I get an abundance of them in this little patch here and these press really nicely along with these snapdragons these are just starting to bloom so I just snipped off a few of them just to give you an idea I have this beautiful phlox it dries amazingly I was so impressed my of course my little buddy here is following me around again hiding underneath some rhubarb now, Sweet Williams, I've never tried it before, so I wanted to give it a whirl. It, I was okay with it. These are bachelor buttons, and also known as a corn flower. They are so beautiful for drying and pressing. These are some other flowers, some ladies mantle, geraniums and roses, and I'll be showing you a few other things. So there's a few different ways that you can press your flowers. This is an old phone book. I'm just putting some sheets of paper in there just to protect uh, people's identity. I also have this little mini press that I picked up from the thrift store. And this is great for pressing little flowers. Now, if you're interested in seeing how one of these could be made, just drop me a comment below and I will do my best to put one together for you. But this is great if you can find them at the craft stores or sometimes if you've even seen them at gift shops. This particular press was actually my dad's. He used to have to collect some samples. He was in forestry as well as worked for Ducks Unlimited here in Canada and he needed to collect samples. And so he gave it to me when he was no longer using it. I used it a little bit as a kid, but um, all it is is some construction paper and some paper towel and some tissue in there. Oh, along with some cardboard that helps keep everything nice and sturdy. You'll see some remnants of things that he had pressed like right here. And there's like remnants of things that I had pressed over the years as well. Uh, this press actually works quite well. I'm happy with it. It is great when you're doing a large batch or some larger items and you just need to put a weight on top to allow it to press or use a strap to keep it together. Here's my collection of different greenery and flowers that I had collected from outside. You can Ask a neighbor if you could maybe snip a few things if you don't have much in your own stash or in, sorry, in your own garden. Um, as well as going out for a nature walk, you can find some wildflowers and leaves that you can press as well. Some of these flowers and leaves worked, others didn't. I'll be sharing my experience along the way. I'm gonna start off with the phone book. It's the easiest. You could also just use a regular book as well. I'd like to just lay everything out and then you want to make sure that when you put them in your book that everything is laying the way you want it to press, be pressed. So I'm just straightening these particular leaves out because they were quite delicate. And another tip too is that you want to press these while they're still quite fresh. I had allowed these to sit for a little bit too long so they did kind of become wilted but if you are on it quickly you can then uh, press them and they'll turn out really really well. I made the best of what I had. 
You want to put some weight on top and then allow it to set for two to three weeks and then you can check on it. So for my little mini press, I'm going to add these little snapdragons and then I am also going to add the little violets that I had. Violets dry amazingly well and so do pansies, but I don't have any pansies. Uh, I, so I just snipped these little uh, violets to test this little piece out. So I'm just going to lay them face down so that I know that the shape of them will hold. And then I actually also decided to kind of experiment a little bit. I've never dried the stem, so I decided to give that a try as well. I'll be showing with you and sharing with you different ways that you can store all your dried flowers as well. And then I'm gonna show you some DIYs that I have made in the past, as well as share a new one that I have never tried before that I really wanted to share with all of you. So you'll definitely want to stay tuned. What's great about this press is that you just rely on the wing nuts and the screws to tighten everything up and allow it to dry for two to three weeks. So here is my large press. I am gonna put majority of what I collected here in this press. I've got these really pretty little flowers here and then I also have some more of the violet stems and some pearly everlasting, some cone flower. I'm just going to put it all in here. It's always good to have some cardboard in between. Again, that just adds some stability because these other sheets of paper are quite flimsy. So I'm just going to go ahead and just lay everything out. You want to make sure everything is contained within your press. Nothing's hanging out. If it's hanging out, it'll probably just shrivel up all funny. It won't uh, dry nice and flat. So just keep that in mind. I am amazed at how well Pearly Everlasting presses. Even the leaves pressed really nicely. Here I have my lavender. It smells amazing. So this here is Lady's Mantle and it dries really nicely. Even the leaves turned out beautiful. I have um, hung this upside down to dry before and that works well too. Uh, just keep in mind sometimes there's some seeds left over and uh, you don't want to get those out in your garden because they will spread like wild wildfire. I have some of these Sweet Williams. I I actually think next time I will actually take the individual blossoms and dry them in the mini press because this actually didn't end up turning out very well, but I'll show you that in a minute. Phlox. I was blown away at how this dried and they come in so many different colors. So I am actually excited to maybe try growing some more and pressing more of these beautiful blossoms. I have never dried geraniums before and so I wanted to give it a try because I think the leaves are kind of interesting and geraniums come in so many beautiful colors so I would wanted to experiment here so the blossoms I left some on the stem I wanted to give that a try and then I pulled some off. I also had this mini rose these dry so well and even the stems themselves like you saw me doing that they're uh, dried really well too. So here's another option. I had these two heavy shelves and I had some pieces of cardboard that fit in between. You can get some long fronds of these ferns. You can place them inside those boards and cardboard, put the other shelf on top and allow it to dry for about three weeks and it worked really well. So I am checking this all out after two weeks of pressing and the mini press had the snapdragons and the little violets as well as the violet stem. The snapdragons dried in a darker color and they were really really pretty and then the violets I am just so happy with how these turned out. They were really paper thin. Uh, the stem now it dried really well i have to say i was really happy with it but some seeds were remain you can see them there on the paper so just keep that in mind now on to the phone book 
I am just going to show you what I have in there, these leaves here. Now, some of them, they were dry, these smaller ones, but some of them still need needed another week to dry. Uh, you'll see some of them are kind of floppy, like this stem right here. So I knew it needed some extra time, but others I was impressed they were already dry. So if you run into that, just put them back in and just set them aside again for another week and then check on them again. I'll be showing you that here in a minute. But first we're going to check the large press. Now some things worked out really well in here such as these hydrangea. Now I didn't show you uh, picking these hydrangea because I got the hydrangea plant after I had already recorded everything. Um, it was from my mom. They do really well. You can also hang them upside down to dry which is another great option. And then the geraniums. Now this was the complete flop. As you can see, the leaves, they're still not dry. It definitely needed another week, but even then they didn't turn out very well. Some of the single blossoms, they worked really nicely and some of them retained their beautiful rich color. The full stems, they needed another week. They were still kind of wet. The one thing with geraniums is that they actually have quite a bit of moisture content. So just keep that in mind when you're looking for different flowers and leaves to press. Roses always dry nicely. And as you can see, that was the blossom stem that was remaining after I pulled off majority of the petals and it dried really nicely. Here is the phlox. Now the phlox stem, it still needed some time to dry, but the blossoms, oh, they're so, so pretty. But when I went to use them, I was actually kind of surprised by something, which I will show, be showing you here in a bit. Here again, I'm just using a tool just to lift up the blossoms because they were so paper thin, but I am telling you, these turned out beautiful. So I'm gonna just leave the stem in the press and I'll check on it again in another week. So here are some of the other flowers that I had. They are the Sweet Williams and you can kind of see like, they're not that exciting. So that's why I think next time I'm going to just try the individual blossoms if I can get them to hold together. Here's the ladies mantle again same thing the smaller stems were already dry and the larger stems needed another week to dry. This branch dried really nicely I think it would actually look really interesting framed in a piece of artwork. The lavender was already dry but my pearly everlasting it actually needed to stay in the press for another week. So ferns typically dry really nicely, but for some reason, this one, it was starting to brown at the stem and working its way out onto the leaves. I'm not sure why that is, but typically they dry nice and green. And I'll be showing you here in another week. Uh, it did need some more drying time. These here were an experiment for me. I decided to try marigold and it turned out really nicely. Um, these bachelor buttons dried nicely as well. They're kind of interesting and another violet stem. Now this particular plant, again, I can't remember the name of it, but the blossoms came right off. So if I were to do this, I don't think I would um, dry the entire stem. I would just try to dry the individual flower flowers. I pu just pulled those off because the stems were actually turning an ugly kind of yellow color, which I wasn't a fan of. So here's all the things that turned out really nicely. And then I'm also going to show you quickly here how everything looked after another week. You can see here the rest of the stuff that I needed to finish pressing dried really well. And now it is all ready to use for our crafting needs. The geraniums were a flop except for the individual blossoms. All right, so for storage, I just, I don't actually do anything too fancy. My ferns, you can leave them in a book or between pieces of cardboard and store them that way. But I like to just remove the individual fronds and place them in a little drawer like you saw me there. 
You can also uh, store them in these little containers. I've got some fox glove that I had pressed a couple years ago. They're still looking well. You can also add some silica gel packets to everything. You can also save them from your shoe boxes or what have you. Uh, and that will help with the moisture content that may get in these. You just wanna make sure you store everything well uh, if you're concerned about things like crumbling and whatnot. So I... <laughs> I'm not that careful, honestly, but I know artists that use pressed flowers, they keep them in some cardboard sheets and leave them on a shelf nice and flat. So I just want to first show you some things I've already made. I made this hoop with some pressed flowers and leaves. This is a pressed rose in a candle jar. I had also done this beautiful orb where I used tissue paper and some fern leaves and added a tea light. I'm going to have all the original videos for these down in the description box for you to check out. And then I am also going to show you another tutorial. I have been wanting to try decoupaging with some dried flower, pressed dried flowers and leaves. So you're gonna need a soft bristle brush and a clean jar along with some decoupage glue. I'm just gonna trim up some of these fern leaves that I had pressed. This again was after some three weeks of drying time. Of course, use any type of leaves that you have dried. I'm also going to be using the beautiful phlox that I had pressed. And I'm going to throw in a few of the hydrangea as well because I didn't have quite enough of the phlox for this project. I wanted to try the yellow rose petals, but I don't end up using them. I just didn't quite the way, like the way it looked. So you're going to start off by applying some of your decoupage glue to the jar and we're only going to be working in sections. Now you can start to add some of your florals or leaves and then you want to apply some of the decoupage glue over top. You want to make sure that your brush is nice and soft because these are very, very delicate. Now you'll also want to keep in mind that these will in time absorb some of the moisture from the glue but they don't right away at least the fern leaf didn't right away so you'll just have to be very very careful with how much glue you apply because in time they'll become a little bit more pliable so i'm just going to continue to work in sections and add some of the leaves and some of the flowers until i get a look that i'm really really happy with so here I am going to try a little rose petal and I mean, it was okay, but I wasn't that crazy about it. So I decided just to leave the rose petals off and I just continued to use the flocks and the fern leaves along with a few of the hydrangea. So once you're happy with the layout of all your flowers and leaves, you can give the entire piece a coat of your decoupage glue. I'm being very careful with how hard I am pressing because things have absorbed some of the moisture and so things are very, very delicate. I'm also being mindful to try and keep my brush strokes going in the same direction as well. I'm just adding another coat because I felt like it just needed a little bit more protection and also to make sure that I've got good adhesion of all the leaves and flowers. So here it is all nice and dry and surprisingly as you can see the flocks actually faded and the hydrangea stayed a nice bright color. So I think next time I'm going to see if I can get some other flocks colors and maybe the color will stay a little bit true but I'm still happy with how it looks. I added some jute twine here just around the top just to give a little finishing touch and here it is just as is. I thought it would make a really beautiful little vase for flowers but I decided that I wanted to add a tea light just to make this into a little pretty candle and I am loving how that looks. It is a beautiful nature inspired craft from your garden.
If nature inspired crafts are your thing, then I have a playlist for you here to the right. I want to thank you so much for joining me today and we will see you in the next one. Take care. Bye.